I tell you what, I am sick as a dog. I just got back from my uh, my Colorado Fall workshops. Uh, I think it was yesterday. Caught some kind of bug or something on the way home. So uh, anyway, I'm hoping my voice will last long enough to do this video. It's going to be a quick one, but I did want to to bring this up. It's a question that comes up fairly often, and I never really answer it in a video because I don't believe I have the most, I guess, sophisticated process for doing this, but it has to do with how I cull my photos, how I, I sit, back up my photos. What do I do when I'm traveling after, the, after you actually capture the photos? So it's something that comes up on workshops a lot, and I always answer it in person, but I've always failed to, to make a video on the topic, mainly because like I said, I, I don't believe I have the most sophisticated process to it, but I tell you what, I've been doing this same exact process now for, for eight years, knock on wood, it has not failed me yet. So I guess it is working in some capacity. Now I'm not saying this is the right way to do it, it's not the wrong way to do it, it's just the way that I happen to do it. So what my process looks like is, of course you, you capture the photos, when you get back to your hotel or, or wherever you happen to be, I take the SD card out of the camera, I put it in my computer and I open it up like so. And what I'll do then is I'll create a folder on my desktop. So you can see right here, I've already done it, Colorado Fall Tours 2024. And then I go ahead and I organize these by the day. So group one, this is back to back workshop. So, so there was group one and group two. So group one, day one. So what I'll do is I'll just take all the files from this particular day and I will, highlight them all, I'm not gonna do it, I'll save you some time here. And then I just drag it into the corresponding day. And then as my 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 trip continues, as I capture the photos every at the end of each day, put the SD card back in the computer, and I go ahead and transfer it to my desktop to, as for the corresponding day. Uh, and so that's exactly the, the overall process of just getting the photos from the camera into the computer, and that's how I keep them organized on my actual desktop. So what I will do at that point, before I actually go through the, the culling process right here, I wanna go ahead and just get, all, get everything organized on my desktop and I wanna make sure I back it all up. So this is what I use to back everything up while I'm on the road. This is a sand disk drive, this is great. It's uh, super durable, it's rugged, it's small, it's thin, it's fast. And what I will do is that at the end of each day, I will go ahead and back up this entire folder here. So every day I back it up, it just continues to build. So I now have a copy of this on my laptop, I'm sorry, now I have a copy of the photos that I've created on this particular trip. I've got it on my, <laughs> sorry, I have it on my desktop computer, or my desktop on my laptop, and then I also have it backed up on this drive here. Now, I never wipe the SD cards while I'm actually traveling. So I actually have these photos captured in three different places. So I have them on my computer, I have them on the SD card where they originated, and I have them backed up here. So. That is the process right there. Now what I do to back up everything once I'm home from a trip is I use these kind of drives. And I use one per year. You can see this says 2024 backup. Everything that I create from videos on this YouTube channel to photos, everything is stored on one of these drives throughout the year. At the end of the year, on December 31st, I make another copy of this and I put these in a safe. And that's how I, that's what I do moving forward. So I've got one of these for every single year going back the last 10 years. And every year I start a new, start off the new year with a new one of these. So I don't have any kind of, of, of fancy RAID systems. I would like to do get one of those one time. They're very expensive, but I have just haven't pulled the, uh, or, you know, actually made that happen just yet. Maybe I will one day, but this system seems to be um, working well for me. Now, as far as the actual culling process is concerned, let me pull this up here. So what I'll do is I open up Lightroom. Let me just close this real quick just so you can see this process here. I hit import and then I will come down here to Macintosh HD, the users, Mark Denny, desktop right here. And then I will select Colorado Fall Tours 2024. And if I drop this down, you can see how everything is organized here. So if I wanna do group one, day one, this is everything that I captured from this particular location. And this is how I do my culling process. What I used to do years ago, what I, what I know a lot of people do, is they take their SD card from their camera, they put it in their computer, and they transfer everything on that SD card into Lightroom. And then once everything is in Lightroom, then they go ahead and do that culling process. I used to do that as well. And the problem is, is I ended up with almost tens of thousands of photos in my Lightroom catalog. 
and I ended up importing a lot of which, you know garbage inside of Lightroom, and then I would have to delete it all. So what I try and do now is get very targeted with what I put inside of Lightroom. So what I'll do here is go ahead and select uncheck all because I do not want to import all of this into Lightroom. I really just want to look through this particular shoot right here, and I want to only import the one photo that I think is the best. Sometimes it's harder to, to distinguish which one is the exact best one that you want to edit. So maybe I'll pick the best two or the best three, but that's what I'm going to go for. And what I like to look for is this. So as you can tell right through here, these images are bracketed. Let me just click on this. This is the bright frame. This is the, the, this is the medium frame or average frame. And then this is the dark frame. So what I'm going to do is I'm really looking at the dark frame because the dark frame is going to be the one that shows the clouds. The dark frame is going to be the one that shows the light kind of pouring through the mountains at the top here. And as we can tell, that light is slowly starting to build in and you can really see it up through here. And that's kind of what I want to look for. It's I want to find the one that's got the best light, that's got the best formation of the clouds. Not sure what happened right here, but that's what I'm looking for. So nice clouds that fill in the entire sky here. I like that. And I also want to find the one that's got the best light as well. So maybe something like this. There's a nice light kind of streaming through here. It's got this nice ethereal glow to it a little bit. There's got nice clouds that are kind of filling in the sky. And then from here, I will import those photos that create that HDR blend. So those three photos. But that's ultimately what I'm doing. I'm not importing everything in to Lightroom. I find that that was... A, a real issue for me is I had so much junk in there because we all know, you know, when you go on location, let's say you capture 100 photos from one particular location, there is probably only one or maybe two of those photos that are the best ones that you're actually going to edit. So why import all the other 99% of those photos? Why not only import the one that you are going to actually edit? So I don't use Lightroom's cataloging feature. I don't use Lightroom's, um, you know, multiple ways to organize things, although I think it's amazing. I don't use GPS metadata and all this kind of stuff with my photos. I think that my process is as, I guess, budget friendly and as basic as it can possibly be. And like I said, I'm not saying this is the right way. It's definitely not the wrong way. It's just the way that I've been doing it. It is very, very basic. If, uh, if maybe elementary, but in, and maybe I should be doing this in a much more sophisticated manner. But like I said, this has never failed me. And I'm a very simple guy and I like to keep things as very streamlined and simplified as possible. So in summary, I go on location, I capture my photographs, I put my SD card in my computer and I go ahead and save it to a folder that I create on my des desktop. I then back every back up that folder onto this drive. So I've got three copies, the SD card, I've got this and I have it on my computer. And then from there, I will go ahead into Lightroom and pick each additional, go to each additional day of that trip and I will only import the photos that I think are best for that particular day. So if I want to come down here to this one, the beautiful curvy aspens here, I will scroll through here and I will find the ones that I think are best for this particular scene. And I will only import that. I'm only going to import what I want to edit on that specific shoot. So I know for this particular scene, if there was a certain composition that I really love that maybe it was at the end of that shoot, I will go towards that particular scene. And that's the only thing that I'm going to import into Lightroom. So quick video this week. I'm glad my voice is probably going to hold out. Hopefully I'll be feeling better here in a few days because I feel absolutely awful now. I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this video, lay down and edit it and have everything out to you tomorrow. So if you do have any questions about this week's video, please leave those in the comment section below and I will do my best to get back in touch with you as soon as humanly possible. And if you did enjoy this week's video, if you could give it a thumbs up, Subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed already. And as always, I really do appreciate you carving out a little bit of time to spend it with me here today. And I will see you all next Wednesday.